Okay. Wonderful. All right, Ashley, ready? Good, we're recording. Okay. Um, so the evening um, has come into full swing, the crickets chirping in the forest, um, kind of the, the smell of, you know, bonfire and the crackling wood as you're all centered around the campfire, finishing up your soups of ramen and things like that. Um, and kind of just decompressing from the information that you have gleaned from Cynthia of the Wood. Um, Elliot has gone inside of the little tiny hut um, and you all kind of have free reign to do whatever you want for the evening. How are you guys handling it, the news? I mean, it makes it makes a little sense, at least. I feel the same as I did before. I think we just have to remember to live every day as a full of stress in case that chance doesn't happen. I think it's a pretty big chance. We have to... We have to come to terms that we're doing this for the future, not for ourselves. Very selfless. Oh, do you think he's okay? I feel like he's putting on a big face. I can see that. He's trying, I think he's trying to make us feel better about it. Because if he showed his true emotions, he wouldn't help the situation. He doesn't want to scare us, you mean? You guys are talking about Elliot? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like he's kind of known for longer than we have. He's probably had more time to process it. I think your yoga in the morning, we should just check in, or at least try to. Yeah. Because, you Art. know, he does blame himself. It's not his fault. I mean, he didn't do it on purpose. Right, it was an accident. We all make mistakes. I made one. We all did. I'm not blaming him. I'm sad that it's going to be over. Because I cherished our adventures, even though it's been... We're fighting the most horrible thing to have happened to ever us. I've got to meet some amazing people. You all, and I cherish you all very close. And without this adventure and us being keepers, I probably wouldn't have met any of you. And I wish it didn't have to end. But we're doing this for the future of Everos so that Everos can live on because if we didn't do this, everyone we know would be tortured day through day and it would just keep continuing being like that yeah it's the last thing we want um as you're all talking um elliot comes back from the uh hut and he looks at you all and he's like, can you all come in here for a second? Um, yeah, sure, Mr. Elliot. Um, you guys head into the tent and see that it's much larger on the inside than it is the outside. Um, kind of a Moroccan-y type of feel with tapestries and hanging lanterns and lamps and incense kind of cling to the air. Pillows and blankets are all just kind of in the central area. 
um, where there are mats all laid out, um, set around in a circle with a central kind of um, like fireplace, if you will, like a circular fireplace. Um, and Elliot kind of goes around. You see that he's changed in kind of more of a comfortable wear, um, no longer wearing the cloak. And you kind of see him for, he's definitely aged and grown a lot since you have last seen him. Um, you see bags under his eyes for not being able to sleep and, um, you know, the redness in his eyes of just trying to stay awake. Um, and he all kind of looks at you and he's like, okay, I need everyone to find a place you feel comfortable in this circle. Why? What's going on? I have an idea and I hope that this can help strengthen your connection back to the dream world and pre prepare you for when you do finally fall asleep. Okay. Okay. And that will plop down on a blue cushion and just plop. Elowen will find a big fluffy, it, it's not the deepest green, but it's still a green one that was there, but it's big and fluffy and she like wiggles a little bit into it and she's like, okay, I'm pretty good. Lucan kind of looks at Bailey to kind of like see what she's doing and is kind of like, it's not that I don't trust Elliot, but also this has been weird. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, anything to do with the dream world at this point feels pretty weird, but if it helps, it helps. And she'll find a, a soft carpet with a nice, darker, calmer pattern, and she'll sit down cross-legged on it and look at Elliot, ready to focus, hopeful that this helps them. Okay. Everyone... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, Luca was just going to sit down on the floor and pull honey out of his bag and put him in his lap. <laughs> okay. Um, so he sits down um, in this, like, around the circle with you guys. Um, Raya does the same thing, sits down next to him. And um, you. Um, kind of try to like balance yourself and Elliot he uh takes his hand um and produces his staff before kind of waving it around for a minute and then placing it in front of him and like candles and, and the lights dim kind of in the area to make a very serene and tranquil place um incense lights up around and smells like patchouli and like lavender um jasmine kind of fill your nostrils as the low vibrations um, of the weave kind of penetrate this area and you kind of feel a sense of like warmth. Um, almost like that feeling of, of like drinking alcohol and like having that kind of warmth to it um, without being obviously drunk or anything like that. <clears throat> I want to be able to strengthen your connection within the dream world because once we all fall asleep, I think there might be a way to wake us up inside of the dream world. Okay. So within the dream world, everyone has their own kind of pocket realm where your anima goes to escape the world. And once you're within the reverie, the dream world, your, your, your anima creates a, 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 a plane of happy memories, happy moments of, of your, your subconscious figuring itself out, if you will. Inside of your dream worlds, however, you are the center of it. And think of you, there's 
a circle around you. No matter where you go, that circle will follow you. So you could run forever and you will still be in your dream world. Well, if someone is in your dream world, they aren't the center anymore. They will have the ability to go beyond your circle. And once you've gone beyond your circle, you will find the center of your soul. Once you pass through that circle, you can then kill off your spiritual center, rendering you powerless. And we all know that no one avoids sleep. Not the Fae, not the gods, no one. And if that means they can fall asleep, Obsidious can fall asleep. So if we penetrate his dream world and move past his spiritual center, we can destroy it. That sounds, oh, fine to me and dangerous and cool. Um, so we have to destroy ourselves? No, that's not what I, I was trying to explain what it means oh okay no we wouldn't you you wouldn't be destroying each other's spiritual centers if you did that you're you're gone so this is how we're going to defeat obsidious exactly bailey but okay. entering the dream world doesn't mean we we don't have any weapons we don't have magic and he's Yes, he might be asleep, but he's back in his realm. It's like him recharging his powers again. I know. But the important that's why I'm trying to do this, so we can strengthen ourselves. And I'm Evelyn actually kind of helped me figure this out. When she, when she her anima died within the dream world, that severance of her being able to fall asleep or, or, or have dreams again, made me start to think about what it means to dream. And if there's a way to kill an anima, then that there might be a way to connect your anima with your real self. And if your real self is combined with your anima, you will have your weapons, you will have your magic, you will have your abilities. But if we do that, it would be more dangerous because that means we'd be more closer to our center self, our, our soul, because that would be combining the two. And if we dry, die in the dream world, we die. That's why you guys are going to infiltrate the dream world. Well, me and the princesses take care of it here in our world i might be a way to be able to find a way to connect them as well and if you have their help we could be unstoppable okay so right now we're just connecting to the dream world but we still have to take the flower to the elder tree correct yes we still need okay. to create the pillars Okay. Okay. So we're just yeah. connecting ourselves to each other. And this is completely a theory. I don't even know if this is going to work. There's no danger in doing this, though, is there? Well, if we're being honest, Bailey, anything we do now is dangerous. Okay. So what we're doing tonight is just us getting used to the idea of hopping in the dream world and getting comfortable with it. But I'm worried if we make that connection, he's going to know. He's going to know we're attempting this. And that is why I brought this. And Elliot pulls out in his bag and you see um, he's procured these pendant necklaces. Um, these are reverie stones. They protect you from his 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 grasp. So I don't know if you remember when you dream and your body and your anima goes into the dream world, 
if your anima gets too close to the void, Obsidious can latch on and you, you create a nightmare instead of having a dream. But normally you can just wake up and you're out of that nightmare. With these stones, these should protect us from his influence. It's almost like we're ghosts in his world. He'll have no way of knowing that we're here because our bodies are still awake here. For lack of a better term, astral projection. Because oh. we won't be going to sleep. Okay. Is this making sense? Yes. It's like a giant dream catcher, but not. Kind of. It's a fail safe. I was able to actually get these from Navrina, the dream fae. She's weak, but she still is using all of her might to protect the dream world in itself. The important thing to remember in the dream world is that anything is possible. We won't have control of our dreams. We won't have control of the world, but we can try to influence it. Okay. And then when we're wearing these reverie necklaces and he starts going around giving you each one of them, it'll allow us to go into the world together. Okay? Okay. These dreams are going to feel real. But just remember that if one of us is ready to go, we all decide to go. Okay. Raya is going to stay here and protect our bodies. I trust her. And she'll like wake us up if anything. She sees us like panicking, right? Right? She looks at her. <laughs> I'll do my best, whatever it takes. Okay. I promise not to bring people underwater, but I have no say, obviously. <laughs> she looks at Bailey. <laughs> All right, we got to find each other first. We should all wake up in the same area. As, okay. as long as we're holding on to our pendants. Do we Bailey? have any more questions? Mm -hmm. All right, well, but. Um, so Bailey will put on the pendant and then she's also going to reach into her bag and take out the necklace that she had bought for Mia and she's going to take it out of its box and she's going to put that around her neck too as a sort of reminder of why she's doing this. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Now, in order to enter the dream world, we have to be in a lucid state. That's why I've created some tea for all of us. And he casts a spell and a teapot starts forming around and then starts forming each tea. It's not going to be the best tasting thing, but it will put us in a lucid state. And soon we will be able to fall asleep. Okay. Thou will take the tea. You want me to drink it now? Because last time I drank it and I was like alone for a little bit. She looks at the others. I followed quickly behind. Yeah, but it was still the under. It's <laughs> scary. We got there eventually. Yeah. All right, guys. Are we ready? Yep. Bottoms up. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Okay. So you all take in the drink. <laughs> Um, and it, it, it's not the best tasting thing, like Elliot said. And um, eventually you feel a, like a cold wave kind of go from the head of your feet to the bottom, or, or from, the head, from the top of your head down to your feet. And then the feeling of warmth comes back and you feel yourself closing your eyes and drifting off to an ethereal type of sleep. Um, here we go. Say that if you want to. Um, the sensation of falling hits over your body, but it's like 
falling through water. A slow and, and, and driftful fall as pitch black surrounds you. And then light comes towards your feet as you descend upon a giant circular um, stained glass pillar, somewhere where you all have been before. You see at the bottom of the stained glass is a woman in a yellow skirt, blue top, and red cape with snow white as a remembrance of it. You all end up um, around in, in this area. Um, Elliot um, descends into the center and then he looks at you guys and he says, is everyone okay? So far, so good. Yeah, this mm -hmm. place, we've been here before. Yes, and then we fell into the void. This, this place is the connection between Everos and the story worlds. You all know how I created the story worlds, correct? Mm -hmm. I used the powers of the dream and the dream light to create these worlds. That's why these worlds, time doesn't progress. The stories are played out and, and it's almost like a dream. Right now, we are in between the dream and reality. I hope that makes sense for you all. When you were here before, you probably had no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, a low, soft, and soothing voice reverberates throughout the area, and you hear the words, so much to do, so little time. Take your time. Don't be afraid. And you realize that the, the first time you heard this was Elliot. It was his voice. Elliot looks and he says, the door is still shut. How do we open it? The door should have appeared. Is it because we're not really sleeping? I don't know. But something is off. Last time, this sounds bad. Well, this is after you like the whole like mirror thing, and this is where we ended up. Last time we jumped into the story world. That's not what we need to do this time, right? No. There should have been a door here. Elowen will start walking around the edges, kind of feeling it to see if she feels anything. The, it, that... it just goes off as if you're on a pillar and there's just eternal darkness around. Even if she like circles it? Yeah. I was going to pretend she's knocking on a door in random places around and like looking for a doorknob. She's like, okay, door, where are you? Maybe it's... <sighs> Wait. Elowen. Yes. What is, what is your power? What brings you strength? Technically, Santhir gave me power from the Elder Tree. And how do you use the power from the Elder Tree? By letting it blossom within me. Yes, but what is your conduit? My staff. Try to summon it. And she holds her arm out and she closes her eyes. And she starts to think of that seed within her, that power, that kernel of power within her chest. As she's holding out her hand, vines grow and, and golden light shape into the form of your staff. But this staff is like cool. 
there's like it it at the top of it it turns into a crescent moon with a hanging uh lumina crystal power tree sap there's vines and flowers that grow down the staff and at the other end is a nice formidable base where totems of animals uh, are carved into it and where the where you would hold on to it is a beautiful handle made with the face of Cynthia. She opens her eyes once she feels something material in her hand. She's like, wow. Yeah. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Uh, Bailey, what yeah. about you? Where my power comes from? Yes. I think we all know. And she'll hold out her hand and close her eyes and really focus on like all of the passion that she feels to try to right what's been wrong, to try to save Mia and the love that she feels for her. And she'll focus on summoning her weapon. She'll give up her sword, so I guess her bow and arrow. You hold out your hand and then you feel something grow within your hand and you see it is an elegant crossbow, a sleek black looking polished uh, crossbow with red jewels and carved and cased on it and golden uh, little runes and designs all across it. And when you think about an arrow, it comes into the into the crossbow as if it materializes like an infinite amount of arrows before you. Nice. Perfect. Lucan, what about you? What is your strength? My strength is my strength. <laughs> 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 Um, so he's going to close his eyes and think about, um, watching his brother be smooshed by the boulder and, um, he is going to like imagine himself being able to stop it and hold out his hand for his weapon. You feel the earth form in your hand as this elegant stone war hammer appears in, in your hand. It feels light to the touch, but you know that this thing has incredible power. You see it form of, of elegant looking stone and granite and harshness to it, but also as it grows up towards the hammer, it's just carved and polished beautifully. Um, and you, you feel every bit of strength, every bit of power, every, every bit of emotion built into this bulbous, boulder smashing war hammer. And you kind of realize. I, my shield. I get a shield. Oh, just, just wait. Out of curiosity. Okay, <laughs> sorry. And as you look at it and turn, you see you you get the realization that this is what you were going to crush. This stone war hammer was what you were prophesized to have. Instead of being smushed by a rock and boulder, you were the one that were going to crush the boulder before you. <laughs> and then as you kind of tilt it to the side, it a shield happens to form as well, almost like an ethereal magical stone built shield, allowing you to block and attack at the same time. Thal? Where did your power come from? Well, okay, that's a little weird, the question. Because um, part of it comes from Evie, and then the other part comes, well, 
my voice, the sea, the moon. It's all kind of connected. My pod. And summon it. Which part? Both? Everything. All right, she'll think really hard about Evie and like how she feels with her magic. And then she'll think really hard about how soothing the ocean is and like the coolness of it. And sings a Little Mermaid song. As you muster your strength and power, water starts to form and swirl all around you, creating a tide pool. And you see fish swim around in this tide pool around you, giving you extra strength for magic, allowing you to pull on the dendians of the sea. Then you also form a beautiful coral looking wand, but the base of it is an apple <laughs> carved from what looks like coral. Wow, she's like waving it around and pointing at fishes with it. <laughs> this Magic is amazing. <laughs> comes from the sea. That looks like you have, will have the ability to summon creatures from the depths to help aid you within battle. Any creature? Those who are summoned around you. So oh, okay. your fish friends. <laughs> Not the Leviathan. Okay. <laughs> they will enhance your magic and allow you to craft even more powerful spells beyond the seas. This is fantastic. Fantastic, actually. Then you see um, uh, the bits of an outlining of a door, kind of just like the door frame materialized in the center of the podium. Oh. Okay. This is, this is good, but the doorway is still sealed. What that about your magic? Can only, oh. I have it. That means, hold on. And Elliot summons his staff, um, but um, instead of the staff, the a staff, this elegant and sleek looking wand appears from bright flames of Phoenix fire as gold um, swirls around him with his wand and magic kind of rever reverberates around the podium and uh, the doorway finally appears in front of you. Wow. Perfect. Let's try to owe it. I can go first if you want me to. Okay. Now. Are we ready to enter the dream world? Can I ask a question really quick? Um, just out of curiosity. So Warhammer is 1d8. My like war scythe was like 1d12. <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> no, you can, you'll, you can take the higher, the, the, it, the, I'll, I'll give you guys um, some stats for that, but. Okay. Um, Trey just that's handicapped that's... your weapon. He did. Yeah, no. I was like, <laughs> Hell yeah. Wait. I mean, I appreciate it. It's cool. I love it. But also, like, that's a severe cut <laughs> from what he was used to using. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you. Oh, you're fine. Um, so what the defender weapon is, um, you gain a plus three bonus attack and damage rolls made with that weapon. Um, the first time you attack with that sword on each of your turn, you can transfer some or all of the sword's bonus to your armor class instead of using the bonus on any attack uh, for that turn. So, like, for example, you could reduce the bonus to your attack and damage rolls to plus one and gain a plus two to your AC. And then the adjusted bonuses remain in effect until the start of your next turn. Um, but you have to be holding onto your sword to get that. 
Does that make sense? I'll send I'll send you guys. I was everything. just about to ask if you can send that because um <laughs> right over my head. Thank you. Yeah. So it's a plus three to attack? Correct. Okay, does the damage stay the same? Uh no, the the uh the damage uh is still like you could so adding at plusing to attack is so if you roll for ac then you add that to your attack for that roll so let's say you roll an 18 and the ac is actually like a 20 you could add plus three to your attack so that means technically you get a 21 um so you would succeed on hitting that or you can use that in, to add to your own ac um during your your turn so technically if Lucan's AC is 16, he could add three, so it's now 19. Okay. Because it has the ability to attack and defend. But that's just for Lucan's, so that's not for all yes, of us? Yes, correct, okay. just for Lucan's. Okay. Okay, are we ready? I, I, I don't know what's on the other side of this door. I hope it's the ocean. We'll see what it is. We'll be ready together. All right, here is playing. You want it? Um, so this is a little bit of a narrative before. Um, um let's see here, let's take care of that, go to that. A dark chamber. Um and a mirror before you um you if this is not what your character see this is just a bit of a narrative um you see evelyn appear in front of the mirror spirit of the mirror come from the farthest space through wind and darkness i summon thee speak show me thy face um a uh, a face appears in the mirror and you hear it say well you don't hear it say this is all just narrative what wouldst thou know my queen magic mirror on the wall who is the fairest one of all famed is my thy beauty your majesty a lovely maid i see alas she's more fair than thee Alas for her, reveal her name. Lips red as rose, hair as ebony, skin white as snow. <gasps> snow white. Um, so uh, the mirror then begins to speak and says, <clears throat> The heart of Snow White doth shine bright. Beware, my queen, a heart of light. Um, the uh, uh, scene just separates or whatever. Um, when you pass the door, you see that you are in a clearing of a rolling forest and, and rolling hills uh, of um, just like beauty and grace um, as, uh, hold on, I don't like this ambience. It's a little too uh, powerful, if you will. I was going to do this one, but yeah, we can do this one. This one will work. Um, here we go. I'll place this if you want it. That's what I'm currently listening to. So Elliot uh, kind of looks around. He's like, 
Huh. You know it? This is Snow White's story. Oh. But not the one from Ever Us. Oh. Choose it's more? different. How so? The queen, I can sense her here, and I can sense Snow White too. But they should be back in Everos, both of them. But it, it's different somehow. Different. Should we um, go find snow? You um, kind of like look over the rolling hills of flowers like that and then um you see uh, a, a girl with uh raven hair and a red cloak and yellow skirt and blue um bodice as she's picking flowers in the meadow and you hear her um humming sweetly as little birds and, and woodland animals uh crowd around her it's that's no Let's go say hello. That's not our snow, though. No. She looks different. Yes, let, let's go talk to her. Wait, question. Would the dream world perceive the stories differently because it's more of about imagination rather than reality? You could be onto something. I have a feeling that we shouldn't talk about Everos at all. Okay. All right. Let's go talk to her. Um, you all kind of go over as the sun like basks on your skin and you feel that warmth um, of summer as snow is picking and uh, flowers. And then she turns and she goes, oh, hello. Who are you? Hi. I'm Thalassia. Who are you? My name is Snow White, of course. And who are you all? Oh, my name is Elowen. It's a pleasure to meet you, Snow White. We were just happening upon the woods and saw you. Wanted to say hello. Oh, well, that's just so wonderful. I'm so happy you all came. I've been picking wildflowers today. Are you going to make a flower crown? Those are fun. Those are very fun. Now, so you just happened upon the forest. Are you from our kingdom? Uh, not exactly. We're just well, traveling. Well, that's just wonderful. Well, here, I have some flowers for the, each of you. And she gives you just like a little bushels of flowers that she's picked and hands it to each of you. Ah, such a lovely day. Yes, it is. Thank you for the flower. And Ellen puts the flower that Snow gave her into her staff. Well, that is a, quite a lovely walking stick you have there. Yes, it's it's definitely a beautiful walking stick. It's powered by my uh, love for the woodlands. Oh, how wonderful. Now, are you guys journeying somewhere? Don't know a quite. I she's like looking at Elliot like where this is just no clue what to say. Snow, um, can I ask you something? And she she looks and she says, "Oh, yes, of course, my my little friend. What can I do for you?" Snow, the queen. Um, did she ask you to pick flowers today? Well, of course, she sent me off with the huntsman, but I have not quite found him. He ran off into the forest just over there. Right. And he wasn't acting suspicious? Well, 
I do say that most people around me kind of tend to act a certain way whenever I'm around, but he was acting quite suspicious. He had a meeting with the queen, of course, just before we'd gone on this mission to gather flowers. Like for your protection meeting? Well, I sure hope so. Okay. She take, slips out her wand so Snow doesn't see it and like tucks it in like her sleeve to have it at her ready. And she's like looking around for the huntsman. It's like, okay, where's this huntsman? Dude. I'd like to talk to him. Well, he went off into the dark forest not too long ago. Um, I can't say quite when. I was too busy picking flowers and talking to the bluebirds. That's not you, right? No, She's how could I possibly be a bird? I don't know. I don't know how you that your stuff works. Okay. Dark forest that way. She like points off to the dark area. Yes, just over those hills over there. The neighboring kingdom. What kingdom what? is that? You know, I can't quite remember what the name of the kingdom is. But I knew no do know they have a very fair and charming prince. He is quite fond of me, actually. I was singing by the wishing well just the other day, and he came singing along with me. I was, of course, too scared to say my feelings, but it was almost like my wish came true. That's often what wishing wells do. <gasps> you do believe in wishes as well. Oh, I knew I liked you. They give hope, of course. <gasps> hope. Yes, they do. Such a beautiful thing to say. You're very sweet and kind, I can tell. So are you. Well, thank well, you. I shall have to make you some gooseberry pie sometime. Will you stop by the castle? I would love nothing more. Gooseberry well, perfect. Pie. You make gooses pie? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. They're berries. Yes. Like fruit. You can forage for them in the forest. Now, I guess I should probably return to the castle and do some more cleaning and cooking and, you know, things that scullery maids do. I'm just trying to keep the castle beautiful for our queen. Well, it was a very lovely to meet you all. You, you too. Huh. Watch your back. Oh, is someone behind me? No, it's just an expression to be careful. An expression to be careful. Watch your back. I like that. Well, you watch your back too, then. Okay. She like watches her back. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye, Snow White. And she just kind of ha 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 ha. Elwyn turns to Elliot, and she's like, "You are very right. This is very unlike Everos." And I'm trying to figure out whose dream this is, because if it snows, the farther away we go from her, we might go deeper into the dream world. And it seems very so, happy. The Do next, we want to follow her dream? No. We need to move on. We need to actually get to the base of the dream world. Okay. This is just the layer of it. Does that make sense? That's in the dark forest, or do you think that's the castle? I think it's the dark forest. We so we're not been. supposed to stay in Snow White's dream? No. Okay. We need to keep moving. All right. Um, you enter the uh, dark forest um, with Elliot at your side, and eventually night kind of quickly um, um, over overcomes the uh, the forest, and uh, uh, you get out onto the other side, and you see this beautiful sprawling village, um, and this gorgeous glittering white castle off in the distance. Um, and Elliot's like, "Okay, we're not in Snow White's story anymore." Oh, we are really jumping to these these realms well they're kind of all meshed together right now which could oh. be a good thing for us it'd be easier to traverse then just kind exactly. of run 
away from whoever's dream we think it is, right? Exactly. Get farther away. Whose castle's that? I'm surprised you guys haven't guessed it. It looks like... Have you... Is that Cinderella's? It has to be. It We've is. Been that one. It, it's, it's a bit different. A lot more grander, grandeur, but the similarities are there. And if that over there is the chateau. Oh. And you look over and you see an old dilapidated estate with ivy growing over all the tower walls and, and, and gates and things like that. And then from the distance, you hear an, a loud uh, uh, clock chime. Um, and you hear it one, two, three all the way up for 12 strikes, meaning that it is midnight here. Oh, she's... she'll be rushing home. Exactly. So we have if to go. she's coming here, we need to go to the castle to get the next spot. Right. Perfect. Let's but go. We, I don't think we can cross paths, or can we? We Nothing bad happened with Snow White. Oh, well, last time we saw Snow White before this, she killed Evie, so <laughs> it's a little weird. It is a little bit. You guys start heading down um, the pathway towards the castle, and then you see something charging up the road. It's large, and then you see that it's horses pulling a carriage, half turning to a pumpkin and half into an, to a, a glittering carriage. It storms right by you as wheels start to come off and you see it turn into a pumpkin and crash on the side of the road. Oh, do we help or do we keep going? No. We keep going. Okay. That's Cindy. Isn't that our Ella? No, okay. it's not ours. Um, you keep going forward um, and eventually you get to the castle, uh, the front gates of the castle. And then as you pass through the castle, you find yourselves in a different looking castle, one covered in thorn, where people are all dead, or no, asleep. Aurora. Sleeping Beauty. Okay, so if she's in the tower right now, Prince Philip will be on her, his way up to wake her. Do we need to go to the dungeons as the opposite, where Maleficent might be? The opposite would be turning around. And as you turn around, you see that, that the village has changed. It's no longer um, a village, um, but kind of like a, a dreamy looking like uh, cloud, basically. Ah, there it is. What we've been looking for, the entrance to the dream world. This okay. is it. Yes. I can sense it. Are you guys ready? What are we going to be doing in there? We need to get in there and try our best to pull ourselves in the real world into this world. Okay. Okay. Um, you pass through. Um, the uh, a kind of ethereal looking portal and eventually um you pass through um and you see this wonderful sky lit um blue skies and sunshine and clouds um that just seem to go on forever and ever and ever and it almost feels like you're standing um on a mirror but the mirror that just goes on forever and ever and ever is, 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 is like just a small pool of water, similar to the void, but somewhere beautiful, like the dream world. Uh, let me see. Here. I like this place. This is it. Now. Everyone, we need to focus, focus on our heart's desires, focus on bringing our, our, our real selves into this area. 
Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Elliot kind of steps forward here. Oh, there's some ambience if you want it. Um, and he grabs onto his crystal and he says, everyone think of your strength. Think of what brings you power. Focus on it. Pull yourselves here. And you close your eyes, wishing hard to pull yourselves here. And um, um, eventually you all kind of um, feel kind of like an energy pass through you as you feel yourself connect with your animas. And as you open your eyes, um, you kind of are, are, are happy. You, you feel like you kind of accomplished something. Um, and then um, you'll all kind of like look at each other like, oh, did you do it? You know, whatever. I'll let you role play that. Do I look different? I tried really hard. I think we did it. If you, it was like a a, a link, a, a connection. It was weird. I felt it too. Fish powers. Do you think we did it? That's it then. I think that's it. I think we did do it. Okay. And then you look forward, and about twenty feet in front of you, you see Elliot kneel down on the ground with his back facing you, hunched over something. Elliot? You approach him? Yeah. Yeah. As you get closer, you see um, that he's holding on to something, um, a body. Uh -oh. um, and you hear him sobbing. Elliot, did something happen with your body? I'm going to try to summon someone crying for a second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You can have a cry. <laughs> you turn, he turns to look at you with, with swollen red eyes of, of tears just pouring down his face as you see that the body in his hands is Sephiria. Wow. <laughs> she, she's dead. No, she can't be. We're, we're not... It's We're not dream. in Everos. Why would she be dead? That doesn't make any sense. She wasn't even here. I wish for what brings me strength and for what gives me power. And the dream world showed me this. Why would that give you strength or power? That doesn't make any sense. Superior is my strength. But why would she be dead? Because we failed her. How did how did we fail her? Uh, I mean, we, we we don't know where she is. That's just it. We knew where she was, but we didn't save her in time. And now this is all my fault. I'll go and kneel down next to Elliot and like put her hand on her his back and be like, you said this was just the dream world, that things here aren't always as real as they seem. And she looks down at Sphere and she looks quite dead. And it's like, okay. Elliot takes a deep breath and she walks over to the other side of Sephiria and she kneels down and she holds her head with her hand and she looks up at Elliot, and he, she gives him a nod. She closes her eyes, and she feels the swelling of power within her, and Elowen. she casts. Elliot holds his hand out. We need her to save Everos. I'm going to die no matter what. If the hellhound gets me before, that's fine. There's something you don't understand about Sephiria. 
but she has the ability to reincarnate herself but she's not coming back you don't think i tried maybe let's try together what does that mean if she's not coming back I'm the guardian of ever us, and I can't even bring her back. <laughs> Bailey will just kneel beside Elliot and put one hand on his shoulder, and she'll just sit with him in silence. She's not going to try to do anything to remedy this. Let's try. I know you said that you're the guardian, and I know that you tried. Well, why don't we try together? Because you can't resurrect something that's dead for this long. How long has she been dead? For too long. This whole time, I was fighting for her forever. Us. And if the dream world is showing me this, But uh, you, there has to be something, some hope, some kernel. She, she would still be fighting for you. I agree. She loved you more than you know, Elliot. I want to go. Okay. Okay. We'll come back. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. Okay. And Elliot sends um, Sophia's body um, into the pool of water and kisses her on the forehead and says, I'll figure this out. I'll figure it out for you, for us. I can't let you go. And he just see him collapse on top of her, just absolutely like holding on to her as if giving her a deep and embrace would, would wake her up. But one by one, you disappear as you wake up, leaving Elliot to take a moment to let Sephiria peacefully go um, in the dream world. And eventually you wake back up in the circle um, back inside the hut. That was wiping her own tears. She's like, okay, that was not expected. Bailey's immediately looking for Elliot and waiting for his response. You just see him absolutely numb, staring at the fire in the fireplace in, in, in the circle. And he looks at you all and he says, that's why I couldn't sense her. That's why she doesn't appear. Yes, Unless sir. I have to go. Go to where? I, I have an idea. Wait, just tell us first. No, I, I have to go right now. Elliot. Elliot. Elliot, you, you owe us that. You do owe you, us some sort of answer. Where are you going? Do you trust me? Most of the time, right now, you're kind of erratic. Please tell me where you're going. Do you trust me? Yes. yes. Then I will explain later. Okay. I love you, Elliot. I love you too. I love all of you. Don't do anything stupid. Don't Sick. go after Insidious right now. You're the pillar of good. Remember that. We all have your backs if you need us. We're your friends. We're your guiding key. Don't forget that. And he stands up, uh, grabs his cloak, um, and he... Um, he uh, materializes in front of you. Oh. He 
he's going to do something stupid. We have to trust him. I trust him to do something stupid. Elowen. I love him just as much as you do, just as much as any of you do. But he loves Sephiria. Imagine that power of when, of that hurt, that grief, Bailey, when you thought you lost Mia. I know. I have been thinking about it. I know he loved her, and I know how much she loved him, too. I, I remember talking to her when we found out about the engagement between Elliot and Chadwick. They had a special bond. They did. And if anyone knows how to repair something like this, it's Elliot. I just wish you told us, and him not telling us makes me believe he's going to do something stupid. We have to respect his choices and trust him. I just hope it doesn't reflect the pillar. Well, there's because... nothing we can do now. I know. You hear... Ellen... Go ahead. Ellen's going to stand up and she's going to look at everybody. I'm going to need a second. And she has a... Like, she teared up when she saw Sephiria. And she turns away and she just has tears rolling down her face. And she walks outside just to take a small... She's not going to walk super far away, but she's just going to, like, circle the encampment. Yeah. Bailey will grab onto the necklace that she got for Mia and hold it along with the pendant. And just kind of look off to the side and reflect on everything that's happened. And what Elliot is going through. Um, Elowen, roll a perception check. Seventeen plus eleven. Twenty-eight. You, you hear something in the woods, like the like rustling of leaves and and sticks cracking, as something is prowling around the encampment. Uh, Elowen gets her. She had her staff on her at, when she walked out, because she always has her staff, and she looks in the direction of the crunching leaves and underbrush and um let's see can she tell what it is i'm trying to see if i oh, I see. I see. thank you sorry you're fine level 18 bitches mm -hmm. so you kind of like ready your staff and kind of in the direction of whatever was prowling around the woods. And then you hear a, a familiar voice say, why the long face, dearie? Who's there? You haven't guessed. It's your favorite feline. How did you get here? Well, I traveled here through teleportation, my dear. Oh, well, your voice is not recognized. <laughs> your voice is not recognized. <laughs> That's how you know you're doing good character voice. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what that was from. Um, what? But you're supposed to be in the under. Well, I was in the under until a certain wonder boy decided to come in, guns blazing. What did you do to the poor boy? I didn't do anything. Salem, he lost Sephiria. Sephiria? Go on. Quite the conundrum for you, I guess. Yes, definitely. I would assume things are not always as they seem. As long as there is hope left in your soul, I'm sure things will turn out just fine. 
Hidden away in a tower in the world of Underland lies allies you know and sometimes fear. You know and fear? Sometimes, but perhaps that change of fate has happened for you, and these allies are your friends. Do you... Are you here? Oh, I'm not there. Never mind. You guys can hear there's talking on the outside of the hut. Ellen crosses her arms. She's like, who are you talking about? I suppose you could figure that one out yourself, Ellen. You are quite smart. Lucan is going to walk outside in response to like hearing like the voices and as soon as he sees the cat he's gonna be like god damn it <laughs> that will well, follow looking very closely and be like oh is this you well it's a pleasure to see you too lucan i see your muscles are more stronger than your head <laughs> he just kind of like <laughs> Squints one eye and like stares at him. The like, almost, the almost champion of Underland in my presence, and he gives like a, a bow to Lucan. What what are you guys talking about? Apparently, Why are you El here? Elliot went down to Underland. And apparently we have allies that are weren't always friends, but are friends. I'm still trying to figure out who. Well, Evelyn. She wasn't always our friend. She was the but, other queen. But she's not in Underland, is she? You'd she be more tail. surprised how many people are in Underland gaining strength. Why, if it was just a little bit ago that your dear friend Merida stopped by. Why okay. is everybody going to Underland? I suppose there might be a war brewing and your allies are gaining strength. Do you maybe they can hide from Obsidius there? Now you're thinking smart. Oh, but why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he want us to know? If our Ooh. allies are gaining strength down there, shouldn't we be down there too? Well, we you? still have to get the rose or the the flower. You yeah, have a mission down. before you. Trust in your friends, and they will pull through. Okay. Trust in our friends. Well, Elliot said he was going to get the princesses. So, and Merida technically a princess. Way to connect the dots, fishy. Thanks, kitty. It's perfect the way you guys come up with these ideas. It's almost like you have help coming to you. No need to thank me. Oh. I won't. Of course you wouldn't. That's okay. Now, it's time for my catnap. I thought I would just deliver some good news for you all to digest. Thank you. Oh, thank you. There it is. I have a question. I might have an answer. Yeah, a convoluted answer, maybe, that we have to sit here for five minutes and ponder just to be able to figure out what the hell you mean. Well, if I just told you, where's the fun in that? I didn't know that this was supposed to be fun, and maybe it's only fun for you. <laughs> I think you figured out my game. Good for you, Lucan. Well... Obsidius is obviously the strongest he's ever been, correct? 
Sure, if that's what you believe. He has a tight control over his domain. Growing power in Everos. What if he seeped into the dream world outside of his domain? The thing is, once you're sleeping, you become the center. You cannot leave your own dream world unless you have a reverie stone, which the fact that there's only five in existence and I got four around your neck with Elliot having the fifth. Unless Obsidius had some type of power that allowed him to traverse the dream world, not just the void, then I'd say he's renderless in his own domain, if you catch my trick. But I'm just saying maybe it was a trick of what Elliot saw. Why do you think that? Because, yes, he f hasn't felt connection to Sephiria lately. But I feel like Obsidius's ego, if he killed Sephiria, he would have dangled her in front of Elliot's face to weaken him. But he uh -huh. also thinks Elliot's dead. Well, not dead, but like locked. He locked has to have world. an inkling. He has to know. The thing is, Obsidius may be powerful, but he is quite daft when it comes to magic. He rules over nightmares, creations, and illusions to feed off those wandering too close. He has a lot to handle. He may be cunning but he's not smart. So you don't think he would do that? And that I'm she's not, really dead? I'm not saying anything. Do you know where Elliot went? I do. Is he safe? I would assume so. He's with friends. We're friends, and sometimes he's not safe with us. Um, sorry, everybody. Well, then I guess it all comes down to trust. Elliot told him just to trust him. If Sephiria is dead, who's going to be her pillar? Oh. Okay. That's what I said we needed her. Hmm. Somebody's going to have to take her place. Who could it be? Unless Elliot has some weird way of reviving a soul lost into there's, something. There's much you don't know about our little beastie. Like Carry on. Area. What? What do we not know about her? Besides, she's dead. She's some powerful dark magic user. It's not my responsibility to educate those who are ignorant. Salem, do us a favor. We're trying to save the world. Oh yes, your world. How terrible it is for you to come crumbling to a sleepy end. You will too, won't you? I suppose, but I've been around for a long time and sleep sounds so nice. Okay. But then your games would end. Oh, you're right. And that's no fun. Just tell us where the fuck Elliot is. Hmm. I suppose. But Lucan has to thank me. 
<laughs> Val nudges him. Paley looks at Lucan and raises her brow. He might need us. Come on, dude. Just be the bigger person. <laughs> he, like, holds his finger up. And he, like, walks <laughs> up to the side <laughs> of the tent, muttering. It's like, this fucking cat, I suppose. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> muttering to himself. <laughs> and you see him just stop. Like, <laughs> and stand, like, straight, like, staring off into the distance. For a second, and you see his shoulders kind of move as he like takes a big, big breath, and he turns around, not letting his breath out, and he gets up and he's like, "Thank you." <laughs> and tell me, and my eyes, riddles like, are your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> tell me that you love my riddles. Now you're pushing your limits. <laughs> All right, fine. I guess you don't want to know what the little boy is up to. Come on, Lucan. Just suck it up. Just lie. We all do it all the time. What? <laughs> don't you? <laughs> no, I don't lie. <laughs> forget that. Forget that last part. <laughs> just, just fucking say it, Lucan. <laughs> I don't know why my opinion is so goddamn important to you. Obviously, I don't even understand your riddles, so I'm not the one that's fun here. I don't play into your fun. I don't make it fun for you. I just sit here and stare blankly while everyone else talks and figures shit out. I think that's why I want your validation so much. Just think of this as a riddle, Lucan. This is how you solve it. Thanks for the hint. Yes. And I'm so not who you're supposed to be thinking. You love playing my games. I just love playing your games. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm the best feline kitty you've ever met. Can I give Sydney an inspiration point? <laughs> <laughs> You're the best fucking feline kitty you've ever met and that's your last one that's all you get that's it i'm done you got it Th listen that's three you got three perfect and that's all i needed mm. all right so tell everyone wait wait where's elliot he might need us yeah that was the deal oh sorry Go inside the tent. Oh. What? Just go inside the tent. That was like Before backing up slowly. Before he finishes taking, like finishing the second time he says that, Lucan's already like turned around, <laughs> like ripping the fucking tent door open. <laughs> like back to muttering like this fucking cat. That was also following looking like wait for me <laughs> thank you salem even though you are rather confusing you are helpful you're so kind have fun okay okay thank so you and she turns around to go to the tent bailey just gives the cat a nod and says get out of here and then goes back to the tent. He gives you a wink before disappearing away. And then um, inside the tent, um, you see that there's a person on the inside that's not Raya. And um, she is uh, waiting there in, in high regard. And you see that it's Evelyn. Val's running and already hugging her. Uh, Evelyn is like... <laughs> You're alive! Barely. You're not Elliot? No, why would I be that boy? Because that's what Salem kind of insinuated. Yeah, said so. Jeez. Well, hello to everyone, too. It's so nice to see you. I'm glad we're talking about me. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was trapped in a forbidden fortress, being tortured to the brink of death. Oh. Thank you for asking. Evelyn, what happened? A lot. 
I tried going into the dream world where that bitch of Snow White killed me and stabbed my anima. Therefore, severing my connection to the dream world. Therefore, when I would fall asleep, I was trapped in an eternal nightmare where I had to go over and over and over hearing the screams of that poor castle. Me is fine, by the way. I'm sure you wanted to know about that as well. Well, I wouldn't say fine. She's alive, but only just. What? No. How? What, what happened? How is she? I mean, tell me more than that. Please. Oh, we're not talking about me anymore. Evelyn. Baylanthemum. What? I don't know. Bailey's just so short and it doesn't sound like a full real name, I wanted to say. Sorry. That is my, that's my full real name. <laughs> well, good. It's quite nice, actually. Nicer I... than Baylanthemum. <laughs> Baylanthemum. Anyways. What happened to Mia? Mia's fine. She's trapped within the Forbidden Fortress as well. Although her torture is not nearly as tough as mine was, thank you again for asking about me. I did ask about you. Barely. Do you how was she how was she tortured? Is she hurt? Well, everyone is not. It's not all fun and fancy free in the Forbidden Fortress where Maleficent is your hierarchy. So she's so hurt. Aren't we all? Do we need How to did you escape? How did I escape? Oh, thank you for asking about me. Elliot came to the rescue, actually, not too long ago. He had me hidden in the under for what felt like years, but Salem said to make a surprise entrance here after he mingled with you outside. It was supposed to be a wonderful reunion, but all you cared about was Elliot and me now. Oh. Uh Evelyn, Evelyn, I am very happy to see you, and so is Thal. We just have a lot on our plate right now, and we apologize. Thal still clung to her, by the way. <laughs> you seem a little angrier than usual. Are you okay, Evie? Spend a night in the Forbidden Fortress, and tell me how you fare. Not well, I would imagine. Yes, thank you for that. I'm regaining my strength, thankfully. <sighs> but the good news is, is Elliot is okay. Lucifer and I have been held up in the under while taking care of Elliot as he's been going on. As you know, the under, we could last hours and days there and it's mere minutes here in Everos. So it's been quite some time since I've actually touched Everos since my last journey in Gallivant through the Forbidden Fortress. Now, Elliot said something about Severia being dead. Yes. Yes. That's good news. How? What? What? Because, do you know who killed her? No. No. Obsidious, of course. Come on, catch up. Okay. But the thing is, Sphere is not actually dead. She's only partially dead. She's recovering. You should have seen the Elliot's face when he realized that Sphere actually wasn't dead. They had this whole reunion and it was ugh. in the under? In the under, exactly. Time works very weird there. A lot happens. But the other princesses are starting to arrive and, and train up and be ready for our next battle. But the reason why I say Sephira being dead is a good thing because who else thinks that Sephira is dead? Obsidious. Obsidious. There we go. So, if I'm understanding this correctly, Elliot saw her in the dream world because at that time she was truly dead, but she's been in the under and time moves way more quickly there. So, she is recovering. She's not dead. And therefore, we're still stuck in the current time with what Obsidious thinks. You got it, man, you're so smart. Okay. Well, okay. that's that's good news. That's great news. And both it's of them are all right. <laughs> it's a lot of process, I know. Okay, thank you, Evie. I'm sure you're all dealing with whiplash, but, you know, time. Always. I feel like I'm getting used to it. I'm nope. glad you finally joined us on Emberos. <laughs> oh, yeah, but we kind of weren't here. You weren't. <sighs> Where did you go? 
The dream world, right? The dream world. We just got back. Huh. You just got back and all that has passed since then. Yeah. Interesting. That's why I was a little confusing at first. But now we're all caught up, yes? Yes. Yes. Now, now that Obsidius thinks that Superior's dead, she is our, say it with me. Secret weapon. I was going to go with ace in the hole, but sure. Ace in the hole. What? What's an ace and what's in the hole? A secret weapon. Oh, okay. Okay. I was close. It was spot on. But that all just means one thing. We need to return the flower. Where is it? Here. We have yet to get it. Oh, yeah. No. We, we have, have the case. We have the vial. We have to go get the flower. Perfect. We must do that first. Get the flower, return it to the elder tree, and then end game. The final battle will begin between light and dark. Okay. God, it's happening so fast. I mean, it seems like we've been doing this forever, and now all of a sudden it's happening so fast. But wait, we have to defeat Maleficent. Yes. There will be a few battles before you that before the end of the end we must rescue mia and the rest of our other friends to gain allies in this war they are all in, within the forbidden fortress and what guards the forbidden fortress the um chernabog uh, chernabog the demon of world eating yes mm -hmm. good job once he is defeated then we'll have to take care of his master maleficent of course but we have to do that before we get the flower. I uh, I also took a vow to take down the syndicate. Oh, yes, the syndicate. Them. They'll be taken care of as well. Don't worry. You're sure? By oh. who? Do. Let's see. Who was with you when we took down a part of the syndicate? Evelyn. Exactly. So I'm bound to finish the rest of the job. I don't like half-assing things. I want to take them down myself. I want to kill those motherfuckers. Oh, good. Good luck with that, doing that by yourself. Not even I could do that. So proud of you for taking the vain option. So we go in together? Of course. Like besties we are. Good. If I'm going to go to an early grave for this world, I want to at least take care of that first. Perfect. The good news is that the Syndicate, after I use that genie wish, has a bond in shambles, and there's only one important leader head of that group. Are you ready for the big plot reveal? Hmm. Say it. Chadwick. What? Oh. <laughs> I guess that's not surprising. Chadwick has been behind most of the downfall of this kingdom for quite some time. His charming and dashing good looks help him with his charismatic wit about him, making him the perfect spy for the syndicate themselves. He only was using Elliot as a ploy into reuniting the Magisterium and the Brotherhood together, but the Brotherhood is god forbid gone now and the syndicate is taking over we take down shadwick we get rid of that plot line wait the brotherhood's it's, gone it's in shambles that doesn't surprise me i mean it it did at first but now that i think about it of it course have it's anything him to do with that letter i sent did it you sent a letter to who <laughs> To Chadwick, <laughs> to the Brotherhood. Mm, I see. Well, that probably fell on deaf ears. I'm so sorry, my child. It's okay. <laughs> it was not my finest moment, honestly. We all have those. Trust me. So, Chadwick is on our agenda as well. That leaves the three of you to take care of Chernobog themselves, and we will join you for the fight against the Dark Bay herself. Okay, so we're splitting up? If we want to get this done quickly, 
Right. All before we get the flower, correct? We have to, because oh. once we bring the flower to the elder tree, it'll latch on. And then we have to do the pillars and everything else. That's the last thing we do, but we have to get the elder, we have to get the flower in our per like in our possession. So Obsidius doesn't get it. So we get the flower, we put it in the vial, we take down some of these people, and then we go in for the end. Or do we get the flower last? I don't know. There's so much to do. How long will the flower last? What was that message, though? There's so much to do in so little time. We need to take our time and make the right decision. Message? In the yeah. World, we, we, heard, we heard a message. And what did it say? I just said. There's so much to do, but there's so little time. And then it told us to take our time and not be afraid. I think from here on out, it's important that we make the right decisions. Well, I think the first step in making the right decisions is not splitting up because he kind of looks at Elwin and Thou. No offense. I love you guys. I'm sure you've, you've been helpful, but you're better at healing. <laughs> that was Excuse you, which is very helpful. <laughs> But I don't want to take on Chernabog by, by myself. I am feeling very offended. My spells are very decently powerful. Yeah, I can heal and bring people back, but that is not just all I am. Okay, well then maybe you've was... learned a couple new ones recently with all of your studying, but... My point still stands. Bailey's a good shot. <laughs> it's true. Sometimes you just can't beat the weapon, especially up against magical opponents. But really, we wouldn't be anywhere without you guys. And that's what Lucan's trying to say. We depend on you, and we all have to stay together and stay safe. All of us have an important role. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Any of you. All right. So we take down the syndicate together. Okay, I'm trying to bog together. I'm trying to bog together. Oh, there's going to be some fights that we have to prepare for. Yeah, like a, a I long I have rest. a feeling we should get some apples. What do you think, Evelyn? I like the way you think. Near my castle, there's an orchard. Could go there. I, I could procure some. I'll need a couple of ingredients, but that is something that I can do. We'll use this hovel as a base, if you will. I could take it with us anywhere we go, too. Perfect. Even better. Although I would like to redecorate just a little bit. Sorry. I think Elliot set it up. I think I really would like to redecorate it for them. Are you guys at odds again? No, love the kid, but come on, his taste is fatigue chic. I mean, he's a bit tired. He's done a lot. That doesn't mean you can't look absolutely stylish doing it. I haven't slept since God knows when. Maybe you should sleep. Sleep is for the week. But it now, keeps it creepy. No, I could use some beauty rest. I'll need a face mask. Clay. Charcoal. Both. Candles. All right. Um, that's it. I'm going back to my castle to procure a few things. We have a broom to get there. I have a way of teleporting, darling. Uh, it's true. That might be a quick, a bit quicker. We'll be back in a flash. Okay. Well, so we'll just wait for you. Perfect. Then tomorrow it's set. Tomorrow, we take down Chadwick. It's kind of weird that they used each other, both Obsidius and Chadwick. I wonder if they knew the each Obsidious. other's intentions. Does not play well with others. That's what makes uh, him so 
easy to defeat, I feel like. See, for, for it was me, I had all the villains on my side. Daft, but dangerous. Obsidius likes to play with himself. Maleficent is a mere pawn in his game. What if Chadwick's just a pawn? Hmm. Suppose so, but we're all pawns in his game with the syndicate. That's true. Good for nothing, Prince. Yeah, I can't wait to see him face to face and watch his snivelling little eyes go out. Ruining the good faith of the Kingdom of Haven. If I was on the throne. What would you do? First and foremost, get rid of that awful decor inside the castle. First issue? First issue. Then I'd plant an apple to your orchard, not too far from the fields. And make every Friday, Fab Friday, where everyone would get dressed up and have a ball. Uh -huh. Dancing, partying, drinking. Like the good and old times. What would you do to help the people? The common folk? Because that's where your true power lies. Within a kingdom. Hmm. I once thought that fear helped power, but suppose Love. it's better to be loved. That's so much stronger than fear. People would mm. easily, if something were to happen, they would take up arms in your name. In fear, they would feel like they would have to. And if the battle turned sour, they would run away screaming. Speaking of battles, I would appoint Bailey as my huntswoman. That's right. We did talk about that. That's what I would do with the crown on my head. And for the people, I suppose, they'd be invited to the ball for everyone to be merry as well. It wouldn't just be for the noblemen. Oh, good, a party. I think you'd be a pretty popular queen. I think I would also try to reunite the kingdoms and create a empire. No, not an empire. That's too dark. I would create a republic oh. where all the kingdoms could be united and have a say in what goes on within the region. I would try to reunite Oxley with Valewyn, hoping that we could create a friendship and get in touch with our brethren over in Jan Show in the Unios regions. Although the elves of the Altus region, they tend to stick to their own things, but it would quite help having them on my side. Has, has Elliot talked to you about the whole end game yet? What do you mean? About how? I was just musing about putting, asking you if, okay. You're actually okay. planning things, aren't you? Well, who else is going to rule Averroes? We have a dead prince on our hands tomorrow. Oh, the Evie. Well, for the time being, yeah, I guess he could rule. Would... And if I'm the one to dethrone him, and it's only within the Avarian law that I should become High Queen. What if Bailey Evie. dethrones him? And then Bailey can pass along the crown to her dear friend. No, I have to say, I would probably give the crown to Evelyn. Okay, thank goddess. I was really <laughs> worried there for a moment. I'll take the role of head huntress. I want all the power and none of the responsibility. And if I'm being honest, Evie, I do think you would make a good queen. Oh, well, thank you've you. seen You've seen both sides of this world. And I think it's clear that you want to move out of the past and the reputation you had. And I think that you could unite a lot of people see the However, reputation oh i was Go just, I was Go just gonna say all this uniting sounds a little bit slippery to me like are you wanting to like unite everybody under one ruler that happens to be you like that's starting to sound a little slippery well as high queen of this 
Avarian Republic. Like I said, I would give power to each of the nations and give them an equality, a say, a council. Evie. Yes. Do not get angry about what I am about to say. Well, when you preface it with something like that. It shows of how much you've grown since we first met you about what you want to do and your future plans. But your reign might not be long. Why? Why would you say that? Because our end game is the end. The end. The end. Everybody's going to die, Evie. Die? Well, that's how when... you rule a kingdom of dead people. You are supposed to be one of the pillars. You and Elliot and Sephiria. Oh, yes. And I think everybody else on, on Everos, it's going to be like a great reset. Once the pillars I bought are bonded to the tree with the flower, it'll be like nothing before. All of the magic will get sucked out of the world. And all of us are created from magic. So we will no longer be. I Elliot, wanted to make sure you knew that. Elliot failed to mention that in our pillow talk. That's why I asked if you've talked to Elliot or not. I mean, I mean, it's good you could be a queen for a little bit once we kill Chadwick, which is amazing. It'd be an amazing queen for the time being. But yeah, he said that we all kind of fall asleep, die, while you three remain behind. But he said you guys won't come back you'll your from my understanding your soul your essence will become the pillar she pauses for a moment thinking over what you say and she says well if it is for me to be a queen for the day so be it you're going to be, pardon my French, the best damn queen for a day that there ever will be on Everest. Whatever this French is, I enjoy it. Say it more. <laughs> I don't often speak like that. Honestly, Eloin, I'm a little offended. I know, I know. <laughs> I'll wash out my, my mouth out of soap later. I have water and soap. You do? Okay, good. We'll Coral I'll use soap. it later. Eh, it's even worse, <laughs> but you know what? I, think, I deserve it. I think you all deserve some water and soap. It smells musky in here. You're one to speak. You are barely mm. alive. What a bath I shall take. I do miss the royal bath chamber. Candles, the sound of people screaming in the dungeons. I mean, the sound of people singing in the castle. Did they really scream? The you know, what do you do to them? Evie, what's even more peaceful is a nice creek. What? A creek? Yeah, you wash yourself in a nice creek. If you get a chance to go by a river, that's even better. You could smerge yourself while you wash. But the way, th this it was like with sounds. Fish. Yes. Well, then, Pardon my French this time, but where you come from, the people bathe in the river and use pine cones as currency. Uh -huh. um, I'll let you keep that, and I will bathe within a tub that has been pulled with 
petals from flowers and essential oils and soaps brought from all around the world, specifically altars. They make some of the best elven soaps I've ever had. Maybe perhaps an ambrosia salad and some red wine, a string quartet in the corner, someone to feed me grapes. Now that, that's a bath. Well, you could just yeah. bring your own basket of berries and the smells of outdoors really, you know, help with the river baths. <laughs> Pardon my French, but I'm with Evie. Fuck that. <laughs> I've never bathed with soap ever. I just always was wet in the ocean. We know, Sal. <laughs> Trust me. Tell. You smell like a brothel after Gaston's been through it. He was mean. We an unrecourse, <laughs> unrefined. Fish summons water and hop of her, and this like let it splash over her. Do I smell better? Yes. How it's worse. Salt water, fish water. Uh, you smell like a turtle tank, dude. Fish pee where you drink. I pee where I drink. Exactly. And there's also dead bodies too. <laughs> That's where I got some of my clothes. I need a shower after this conversation. So, Bailey, would you like to join me in the castle baths? We can have some girl time. Mm, more than you know. Oh. I want to try a fancy bath. All right, fine. Do we all go to the castle? Is this a girl's trip? Oh, Lucan. So, sorry, Lucan, Lucan, you can join us too. Or you can go with a river with me. Lucan's one of the girls. It's fine. <laughs> He does it for the girls and the gays. Our official group name is Lucan's Bitches. Yeah. <laughs> I, Don't take a bath with us, Lucan. I really shall fun. not be in a feel... group name that. I am <laughs> no bitch. The only bitch I am is straight up. Evelyn, you're the bitch. Hey, you're the, you're you, the boss bitch. You all you have your mouths bitch. washed out with soap. All of you. And I you... thought I was bad. You know what, Bailey? If you're going to call me a bitch, you better put the in front of it. I like that. Yeah. The bitch. The, the bitch. head bitch. The you're, boss bitch. You're the if you boss will. bitch, Evie. The. It's Let's go take a flowery bath. Plus the boss bitch. <laughs> plus boss bitch. I highly like this. Okay. Let's go take a rosy, bubbly, candle scented. River creature free bath. And you, you all can enjoy this. Your, your quaint bath in the river. Halloween. Yeah. Have fun with the fishes. I will. They're actually quite friendly. They are. <laughs> you your dead skin too off your toes. <sighs> <laughs> Do you have a sauna? A sauna, my dear. I have a whole spa. Let's go. Perfect. And I'll even get the little cucumbers on the way. Now I could use some girl time to tell you the truth. Perfect. Then it's, it's settled. A, it's been a while since I felt pampered. This is reminding me of one of those stories where Hercules is from, where they bathed and wined and dined those they were about to sacrifice to war. Listen, if we're about to sacrifice ourselves, I'm going to bathe and wine and dine myself first. That's self-care. And we will look pretty doing it. Tomorrow marks the end of this man's reign. We'll take down this fucking syndicate. I'm about sick and tired of men, honestly. I'm with you. Obsidious, okay. Xavier. It's okay, Lucan. Like I said, you're one of the girls. Who's Xavier? Xavier, the crown prince of evil. He was an elf. Dark times. Oh, okay. I think I remember reading about that. He tried to open the gate, right? The gate of, the gate of Oak House. Who got it? He's the oh, one yeah. who created the wicked witch that we know. Nathaniel. I, I guess I have. I have heard those stories. The past keepers. The past keepers, several of them. Was it 15 years ago? Oh. 
All right. I was I one years old. <laughs> well, what a time to be alive. Well, now, at the time, I didn't know it. I was discarded as nothing. You and I have that in common. You must meet my mother. Well, she's yeah? dead, but. Oh. Oh. My adoptive mother's still alive. I have no idea who gave birth to me. Well, that sounds like a plot hole that your story did not complete. <laughs> oh. I will, have, I will have a word. With who? Almost it seems like your character sheet's missing something. With Elliot? Well, Elliot? I, I will have a word with, with the author. If they'll allow me back in after my last gallivant through the Hall of Stories and destroying my own room. Yeah, we saw okay. that. Oh, you saw that. Did I do good? It, it made it tricky to get clues. Oh, so sorry. I really didn't want anyone to find out anything about me. Makes sense. I got to have fish powers, though. Merciless. That was cool. Her I don't have them anymore, witch. but... Well, she's dead and destroyed. Uh, Lucan and I definitely took care of that one. Yeah, I know. I know her carcass is in the seas and rivers and oceans that which you bathe. Okay, this bath sounds really nice. I, I get it. I'll take a bath with the flowers and the grapes and the smelly waters that are good. Well, see, there is one clause I forgot to mention. I'm not queen there. So we're sneaking in. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. This okay. is why do I feel like this is a bad idea? It's a great idea. Let's do it. Listen, Thal, you were saying we have to live like it's our last. This is it. This is it. Let's let's have a good time before the rest of our time is spent babbling for our lives and for the future of this world to an end that we won't probably get to see. I just hope the hellhound doesn't get me before then. Yeah, that would be pretty inconvenient. I'm glad I forgot about them. We have to figure that out. Yeah, how's yours doing, Evelyn? Oh, well, the good news is when I was in the fortress, it wasn't after me. And the ender? Is it after you? No. Come to think of it, I didn't hear any howling at night. Maybe <gasps> we should go to the ender. What? I have a perfect, brilliant plan. That is? Step one. We get the Hellhound to take Chadwick. I like that plan. It'd work for your soul. No, the Hellhounds. See, the Hellhound wants something who is powerful, who's claimed many of innocent lives, who's took the scales for their favor. And what better option than a reformed queen? than a current reigning prince overseeing a dark syndicate. It's a perfect poetic. idea. That's a great so idea. he's worth more than one. He's worth a bet more weight than I can even muster myself in gold. I'm petite. I'm a skinny legend. Elwyn, we will wipe our debts. All right. That's a perfect plan. You're okay with that? No. We have to but stop he isn't Chadwick innocent. either way. We're going to stop Chadwick either way. He isn't... He's not innocent. He's a very evil man. And we all promised Bailey to help her. And to help her is taking Chadwick down. And I don't and he... think he would stop if he would just be imprisoned. Exactly, you would find a way to escape. And also, didn't he try to blow you up on a train? Yes. He did that? Oh, God. That was him? Well, of course. He's the leader of the syndicate. 
Who else put that head on you? I didn't know it was the leader. Listen, I have to tell you, of all the things the syndicate is known for, supplying a lot of information has not been one of them. I'm just learning that he was the leader, and I never knew who put the bomb on the train. But, yeah, if we're going to kill him, we might as well get something out of it. Well, and that's if... why his hair is so big. It's full of secrets. His oh. hair or his head? Inflated male ego. I am All sick right. of men. And it's decided. Girls' night spa day. And we kick some ass tomorrow. There's the title of your episode. <laughs> um, here, all right, we'll end tonight's episode there. Um, here is the um, outro song for you all. I love this <laughs> game so I'm a motherfucking much. woman. That's right. Uh, I love this game. I love all of you. I oh. love you guys. Trey, for my yes. uh, 